All right, welcome back. Um, in this video, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be finishing up our schematic. So we've uh, um, we've come to this uh, point. Where we've got the schematic, uh, the different sections, the power, um, the 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 UR, the oscillator, um, you know, the, the the microcontroller itself, the um, the light sensor, and the debug connector. We've got all those pieces put together in our schematic, right? So our logical arrangement. We've wired it up. Now there are a couple of things that you want to do with your schematic and you want to do this periodically, but let's go ahead over to our, our design here and let's, uh, let's look at where we're at. So here, here we are. I'm going to close this um, panel over here. I've got that open here. All right. So, um, so, so one of the things you want to do is, you know, again, these tabs here um, allow you to move between the different modes of the schematic tool. And so let's go over here to validate. And one of those things uh, that you want to do to validate your design is called an ERC, an electrical rules check. And so what that does is it will check your schematic to make sure you don't have things dangling or, you know, um, or, you know not connected. And it doesn't, doesn't say that your system is going to work. It's just going to confirm that it that it is um, at least a, at a first glance it is um, it is hooked up in a way that's consistent with what the system believes you're trying to accomplish so let's run that and you'll notice you get this little box down here and um, and it shows you these things I've got no no errors I've got uh, seven warnings so I'm going to click on one of those warnings and it'll draw this little uh, line from space here and it'll point at that and they'll say, hey, you've got this pin VDD hooked to the, the net VCC. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and approve that one. And I'm going to do this next one. And yeah, I'm going to look at that and I'm gonna say, yeah, that's okay. I'm going to approve that. And same thing here. I'm going to approve that one. And I'll look at another one. Yep, approve it. Um, so you're making this sort of deliberate decision, right? That's, that's always you know what you want to do um, when you're engineering a system, right, is... Um, you're going to have to make decisions, and sometimes warnings like this are okay, but you want to make sure that that's a deliberate decision, that you are doing that because you know what's going on, and, and you've delivered, you don't want to make that decision by default. You want to go in there and look and say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. So I'm going to click on this one here. This frame has no value. That's one of the mysteries that I've had with... Um, with Eagle over the years, I don't know why it, it demands that the frame have a value. Um, I tend to just avoid that, and so I'm just going to approve it. Um, and same thing with this connector. It doesn't have um, a value either. I'm going to say that's okay. I'm going to approve that. All right, so I've got these approved. approved. And they're still in this list of approved, um, approved items. We could go back later on uh, if we, you know, if we so chose. We could go back. Now, let me show you what would happen if we try to, we'll try to generate an error. So I'm going to exit that. And let's say that I, um, I create, I'm going to change this here. Um, let me change, I'm gonna just going to delete this here. And, uh, and then let's run the ERC here. And you're going to see that I've got a warning here where I've got an unconnected pin. So it's got this unconnected pin. We, we, you know, we're going to go through all these and we're going to make sure that, oh, okay, that's not what I intended here. I actually wanted something. So let's go back into the design here and let's get the net and we'll go ahead and make a wire and then we'll right click on it and we'll name it. But let's say that I name it something wrong. I name it not what I really want. I name it something else. So that's not really what the other, the other end is not named RXD, it's named RX. So let's go ahead and sort of validate and let's run the ERC. And so I've only got one pin on the net RXD. So it's saying, hey, um, you know, you may want, you may be wanting to do it this way, but know that, that there's only one thing connected. So let's go over here and, um, you know, rename this net to RX. All right, so now I'm going to do an ERC, and I get nothing. So um, I don't think it popped up somewhere else. No. Um, so I get nothing here, which means that it passed 
um, it passed the, the test. So, um, yeah, so, so we passed. Okay, so that's electoral rules checking. Uh, just to make sure that you, you know, you, you know, kind of as a first order sort of, hey, did you, um, you know, do you have any sort of glaring mistakes um, in your in, in in your wiring again, it doesn't say the thing's gonna work. It just says hey um, This schematic doesn't look quite right. So um, the other thing I want to show you in this video is um, You know, there are some automating tools, right? So behind the scenes you can um, You can automate this right just like up here. You can um, you know, you can type help and uh, um, Or at least you used to be able to um, Anyway, you can run commands from up here on this on this command line. Um, I tend not to do it. That's why I'm not um, I'm not exactly sure what Autodesk has done with that. Um, but anyway, so if you come up here to automate and you go into say the ULPs, these are user level programs, and you can look and see there are different things that are that allow you to. Um, to automate certain features, and one of those, um, one of those, those things that you're going to want to do um, is to create a bill of material. So it'll basically give you a list of all the parts. And so if I search for B O M or B O M bill of materials, and I click it, it will run this. And so this will, this will run a bill of materials, and it will, it will list it by parts. So each part has a reference designator, and then it tells me what those are. Or, you know, sometimes it's more valuable to have things listed by value. And so if I do that by value, you see that I get, you know, where I've got a whole bunch of capacitors of the same value. I just get one item, right? Because when I go to buy this thing, I'm actually buying values. I'm not going to buy reference designator. I'm going to buy the value, and then I'll just buy enough to accommodate the number of parts that I've got on that board. So then you can export it as a CSV and then you know you can say save and it'll pop up a window and let you save it wherever you want to save it on your on your drive. So you know I can save it here on my desktop and there I'm done. So um, and that's it. So so that is um, that is how you do this um, the, the bill materials. Uh, I'm trying to let's see there there it is if you view it in CSV format so CSV um, if you're not aware of that CSV is basically the textual format of an Excel file Let me close that um, so it's the textual format of an, an Excel file it's kind of that exchange a textual exchange format that once you pull that into a into Excel then you can save it as a um, you know, you can save it as an Excel document, so you can get all the sort of richness of that Excel binary format. Um, all right, so that's that's pretty much it for the for the um, schematic. Now, to kind of preview what's next, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be clicking on this button up here to switch to the PCB document. And since I don't have a PCB already, it's going to make one for me, and it pulls in all these parts. And so here are all the parts that are going to go on my board. And here's my board outline um, that's this big rectangle. And you can tell the difference between uh, the board outline here and the rest of the world here by this yellow line, this continuous yellow line, uh, which is on the dimension layer, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. But notice it's kind of a grayish, a little less dark um, sort of gray here. And then it's black in the middle. And this black in the middle, you know, is the board itself. And so, you know, I can take a part and I can move it into the board. Uh, I can do things like, uh, you know, rotate it. Um, you know, I can... I can click it and I can move it into the, you know, I can move it on the other side, blue being on the, you know, back side and red being on the top side. And so um, I can go in and I can reshape the board if I don't like this. And we'll see that we can, we can actually import a different board, which is what we're going to do. We're going to bring in a different one that is um, uh, more representative of our, I'm not getting the handle here. There it is. 
you got to find that little plus, like I said. You got to find a little plus wherever the person, I didn't draw that symbol, uh, are this footprints. These are called footprints, right? And they're linked to, um, they're linked back to your schematic, but you've got to find, so there's a little plus right there in the middle. If you click on it, then you can move it. Uh, otherwise, you got to kind of hold down. So if I click on that one, see that little plus right there, right there. Um, so when you get the plus, you can move stuff. Otherwise, you've, um, you know, you're going to struggle with moving moving the parts. So you got to kind of find that plus. And once you figure it out, then you kind of know for that part. But uh, there it is on that one. Uh, that's one, I think, one of the eagleisms that, that I found to be somewhat non-standard across other, other CAD systems. When I want to move it, if I click on it, I should be able to just grab it. I shouldn't have to look for that plus. But anyway, that's... That's neither here nor there. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do more. Um, we're gonna use the the layout system more in um, um, in earnest the next time. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a preview. Now, when you hit Control Save, um, I'll go ahead and save it as the light sensor layout. And we'll talk about how you actually wire those up. And so now, if I go back to my my design viewer here, this is my design, I'll see that I've got a board and uh, you know here's the layout, here's the the schematics. So now I've got two documents that are part of my uh, part of my system here. All right. Um, that is it for um, you know kind of the schematic and then the preview into the layout. Uh, we'll talk about the layout in more detail. We're gonna have to kind of bring in some of the mechanical pieces because that's going to affect, how we do our um, our board outline, right? We want to get that board outline aligned with our enclosure. So if you remember, we're going to be you know putting it into this little box here with these little standoff pins, and so you're going to want to have a model of this um, to to do that work, so you can find these pins and account for them. Because when you get the board all put together, you know it's pretty. The assembly is pretty tight. There's there's quite a bit in there. Um, even if your battery's not quite this large, there's quite a bit in the system. So, um, so you gotta you gotta be aware of where all the obstructions are when you're you're putting this thing together. All right, that's it for now. Um, in the next one, we'll start working on the layout.